You're listening to the Cantina Cast, your home for thought-provoking Star Wars talk. Join Mike and Albert each week as they break down the latest news, trailers, movies, and of course, all your favorite characters from a galaxy far, far away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 229, the Q&A, Patreon, question, board type show. Uh, I'm your host, Mike, and of course, I'm joined by Albert and Jonesy. Albert, say hello. Hello. What's going on? Oh, well, you did say hello. <laughs> What's going on? Anything good? Um, Yeah, this show. This is good. Um, is it? I don't know. I'm it's going to be good. Complaints about me. Here, well, yeah. well, you and Jonesy will carry the show. I'm, I'm a beast of burden these days. But anyway... Jonesy, say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. Good to see you again. All right. Well, we got a little bit of news, and then we're going to get into our questions. Now, first up on the on the uh, agenda here is the EW uh, Entertainment Weekly EW I, Entertainment Weekly article by uh, Anthony Brezakane. Again, uh, he seems to be the uh, mouthpiece. I guess he was always doing these articles. Good articles, by the way. Um, I haven't had a chance to really read it, but Jonesy, you informed me that it's it's you know, you know, it, it's you know here. Go check out Han Solo, pretty much. Um, the only thing that struck me was uh, the pictures there, obviously, because I can't read. And uh, the, the droid that's in the back of uh, Han Solo and Chewie in the first image that you showed there. But uh, it looks like Albert said he looks like a bartender droid, so he's not as cool as he once was. But anyway, I'll, I'll throw it to you, Jonesy. What, what's this article all about? Yeah, it's kind of a forward piece in order to get people to go buy the magazine, it looks like. But Ron Howard does have some quotes in there talking about Han's you know, rite of passage and and kind of these undertoning themes of, at least the way I interpret it, of this, you know, finding your place in the galaxy. You know, where do we, how do we get it from here to there type of thing. So, um, but there were there was an, a couple of little interesting things about uh, the style of Lando and, and Han. So Han likes to keep things, as he called it, rough hone, uh, rough hewn, however you pronounce that. Um, and it sounds like more intentional, right? So when we look at the Falcon, he wants to blend in. So I'm kind of curious now if the Falcon's deterioration over the years is a, you know, is on purpose. Uh, or according is it maybe to the he... last shot novel, yes. Han oh, likes to well, live in filth, apparently. Spoiler but... alert. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Right, yeah. So it's this, it's this blend, right, of Han's potential laziness or, or whatever you want to call it, and then yeah, doing that with uh, making sure it blends in with Imperial, um, you know, not being drawing attention. But then Lando, I uh, thought was pretty cool was the uh, style is part of his quote unquote arsenal. You know, they tend to want to give you stuff if you look good and things like that, which I thought was totally Lando and and, and right on the money. Yeah, and that's Actually, more yeah. of the the last shot right there. Again, if you're reading that novel, you get a lot of that from the book too. Actually, Albert, I was going to ask you a question with Lando. Now we know he's suave. He's he's kind of he's got the moves and everything else, but he's really not that flashy. I don't think they went too flashy with him here, but you know, with the yellow and the black tie thing that he's got going on there and the fur coat. I don't think that's too flashy. I think it's within his character. But in the last shot, he it seems pimping be, baby. Yeah, well, yes, he is, but he's not like over the top. Like in the novel, it's the the last shot. It seems like his character is. Way over the top. Yeah, in, a little in, flamboyant in, almost. Yeah, exactly. And here, it's, it's exactly true to the character that we see in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Because he wasn't really, other than his blue cape there that he had with the yellow in it, he wasn't really, you know, that flashy. He fit in with everybody else, really. He's just a little, maybe crisper, I guess you could say. And mm-hmm. of course, he had the, the swagger and the, and the moves and everything. So I was just curious. Do you think this look, I mean, I don't think it is. I think it fits with what, you know, we think of Lando and, and stuff, but... Uh, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on that? Comparing what we know in the novel, because I'm not done with the novel, and I don't think you are as well, but comparing to the novel to what we see in the movie so far. So far, I would say the movie's a little bit more reserved. Even even like the over-the-top stuff that we see in the movie clips, like the big fur coat, right? That's the one that kind of stands out to me more than the flashy yellow shirt and cape. Yeah. Because that, that, yeah. that seems more in his character, but that big fur coat just like, you know, overpowers that shot and the way he's just there, sitting there with that smug look on his face. All that still fits to me in character with the movies, but I get your point because when you read the book, and of course, you know, the, the book, it gets pretty detailed and uh, in really gets very detailed into what kind of outfits he's wearing and why he picks certain colors. And there's, uh, there's a whole like dynamic of Star Wars that I've never thought I would get into with the last shot. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I don't say the least. I don't, I don't personally mind it. I guess it doesn't, doesn't really bother me, but wow, yeah, they like, they really get into, 
um, the colorful aspects of, of him. And he's really like this, I mean, he's like this ladies man, like he's the Barry White of the Star Wars universe uh, throughout, you know, beginning to end so far. Every moment he's got, he's got two things on his mind, you know, uh, droids and women, um, probably in reverse order. Um, well, I don't know. These days, you know, things some lady droids. They, yeah, exactly. So, but anyway, yeah. continue. No, that, that was, that was really it. But I get your point. Yeah. Like if you, when you get a chance, if you, uh, should you read the last shot, you'll definitely get a feel for what we're, um, for talking about, which is, it's kind of, it's, I don't know. I don't want to say it's, it's uncharacteristic of him. Cause that's not fair. Cause we don't really know that much only from what we know from the movies. But I think we were talking about the line where he says baby in the trailer, one of the trailers. And that was a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. feel like that I, was I, a stretch. You'll see that line to me fits more in line with the character that I'm reading in the last shot. And they're not, yeah. you know, I, I, I won't say they're again, they're not diverging down completely different paths. It's just there's a little bit of different flavor with him, I think, in in the last shot that that I've seen or read so I'll, far. I'll, I'll just say this: I think it's over the top in my mind for Lando, even for Lando, which is saying a lot because you know it just seems like he's so cool because he's playing it cool and he's not too flamboyant, like he's not too over the top. Where it seems in the book they're just making it that way. But I don't want to get into a whole last shot you know, breakdown. Maybe we'll do that in a couple of weeks or whatever. Yeah, that'd but, be fun to do. In any case, uh, well, let's get into the solo poster. Yet another solo poster. This seems to be the theme of the last month with us here on the show. And I have to say, I think this one I like the best. Yep. Um, and this kind of fits everything. And, you know, I, I really dig it. It's pretty cool. So, uh, Albert, what, what are your thoughts on this? Because Postergate was kind of your thing back a few weeks ago. What, what do you think of this? I And the blaster looks a little different. Am I wrong here? His DL-44 looks a little The front looks different. a little odd, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't well, know what... he doesn't have the scope on it, I don't think, yep. but I could be wrong. It could be on the other side. But anyway, um, what's your thoughts, sir? I like the composition a lot more, uh, like the colors and the way that that yellow yeah. is like front and center. Like, I hate to use the word pop because that was like so 10 years ago, um, but it really stands <laughs> no, out. It was never even 10 was, years ago. It was, it was like two? Probably, I have no idea. Yeah, like 1996 I'm maybe. I'm completely I don't out of my element. Um, well, we're old, yep, but go ahead. Yep. Uh, but the co- the composition looks great. Um I had to do a double take on Enfys Nest because I thought she was playing a flute or he, whatever. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know what, is it a he, is it a she? What What are we going with? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's like one, I thought officially it was a she and now I guess Jonesy, you showed something where it says he on it. So I don't, I don't know. Well, but anyway, who cares about that? But go ahead. Yeah. Go, continue. Um, Beckett looks really pissed. I don't know if you guys saw it. If, if that's just me. They all look pretty upset. No, that's just a picture of me. Odd. That's yeah, just kind of a picture of me. for Beckett. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. that's just me on the poster. That's what I look yeah. like. Uh, and uh, L3 is there, hidden, kind of, between Beckett and yeah, Infinite. just kind of yeah. tucked back there. Um, Emil Clark looks delicious as usual. Chewie looks like he's having a bad hair day. It's like he's got 80s hair. It's like big Actually, hair, don't he, care kind of thing going on. He looks like Empire Strikes Back Chewie. Yeah, I know. No, don't get me wrong. And, he and looks they photoshopped more, him in there. Yeah, I know. I get you. He actually looks more like the Chewie that I think we were used to seeing. He just looks a little different in, in this series and that. I always attributed that to him being younger, but this looks more, what, I guess, what we're used to from, you know, years ago. Well, he looks great. But, uh, Jonesy, any thoughts on the pose? I like the color scheme. I think that's what I like most about it. But, uh, Jonesy, what would say you? Oh, see, I yeah. said that. I didn't mean to say it, but go ahead. <laughs> it, no, I really like it, too. I it, It's kind of, it just feels Star wars to me. And what's interesting is the pose of, uh, as a lot of news outlets are picking this out, Alden Ehrenreich's pose is very reminiscent of the, publicity shots that Harrison Ford did back in the day. And that was a, the shot of the gun you were mentioning before. The blaster very much looks like that same type of uh, uh, model that they used for those uh, for those publicity shots back then. So, but no, yeah, it's great. I like the uh, Lantos cape actually is what I started looking at a little bit closer because on the outside is that purple, but with the wave back, you get that really, um, I don't even know what kind of blue that That's is. It's like that the Empire Super Super that. blue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it reminded me of, Mike. It, it very much looks like his his uh, Empire cloak, which I thought was a you know, a great reference back to that. If that's what it's trying to do, but uh, yeah, purple on the outside, but that blue on the inside, and yeah, it, it does pop. <laughs> I like Lando's right. uh, lightsaber yeah. too. Oh, please, oh, geez. <laughs> if that happens, I'm kidding. It looks like a lightsaber. Though, serious... when you first saw, you're like, whoa, wait, oh wait, no, that's his, that's his gun. Never mind. We're gonna have a serious discussion on this show if that happens. But anyway, let's uh, let's let's get into the well, a few trailer spots. There's been a few of them. I actually, I'm surprised we haven't had a flurry of them yet. But uh, we've had a few of them. The one I liked was uh, with Hans showing Chewie his cards. 
Oh, I think yeah. that was my favorite one, and you know that was a great scene. That, one's that was great. Risk, she was, by the way, yeah, correct, yes, and and Chewie does the, you know, and he shakes his head, and that was a great yeah. moment. That was oh brother, yeah, exactly. I I think that was pretty good. The one with I'm surprised we got was where he mentions, uh, what's your name when they first meet? I guess this is right when they're doing the job or whatever and stuff like that. So I don't know, Albert. Uh, thoughts on those TV spots? Um, so there's two of them for at least at the time of this recording, there's two of them. There's one called crew and the other one's called risk. And we just talked about risk. That's, that's more focused, I guess, on Chewie and, and Han. You get the very beginning. It was like, so what's your name anyway? And then, you know, Chewie, Chewie roars it, which <laughs> we can only assume he gives him his name. And then we get more of the, you know, uh, there was another line from that one particular spot where Han says, you think everything sounds like a bad idea. And it's almost like, you know, he's Mr. Negative and, Han is Mr. Positive, and we know that's probably going to turn around later down the road. Um, in that same one, there's a shot of a, a gonk droid. Did you guys catch that? I did not see it, sir. Yeah, yeah go watch it no. again. There's a there's a scene in there. It's like a one quick shot where it shows like this, like this uh, maybe a protocol droid. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say, but it's a bipedal droid, and he's kind of hunched over another rounder looking smaller droid, and it looks very similar to like a shot you would think between C-3PO and R2-D2 which is cool in itself. But then if you look just slightly behind that, if you pause it, there's a, like a little white gonk droid that's sitting there in the back, which I, I got kind of excited about. And that's also the one that has I sent you guys a picture. It looks like work. Dave is holding a rocket launcher. I don't know. Did you guys look at that pic that I sent? Yeah. Oh, it is him. Is it? You can, you, yeah. So yeah you exciting. can tell by this, the, the way his eyes are and the, 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 the cheeks, you can tell it's him in the hair. Yeah. That um, one's, now that's my cool. question is, is this a relative to the guy we see in the stands? In the Phantom Menace, it's got to be. Is this like? Is this like a distant? Maybe his he lost son? all his money at one point, and he's out for redemption. Was he? Exactly. So, how are we going to retcon this one, uh, Pablo? I'm just curious how we're going to go about that. Um, I'm. I like to see him this way. Then your buddy, the pink walking thingamajig that was in that <laughs> that that was just. Yeah, anyway. Show club. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, and then actually, uh, what the one thing I want to say is, and I think. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I think I speak for all of us fans that grew up with Star Wars in the original trilogy when Billy D came on and he said, and the way he said Han, he says Han, and of course, Donald Glover continues that tradition and says it that way as well. Yep. I don't know if you guys, I, I would imagine you guys caught it as soon as you saw that yep. that point. There. Well, so, yeah, and that's yeah. in the the crew in the crew, the crew TV one. spot. Yeah. Crew. But then if you watch the Star Wars show that came out this week, which we don't I don't think we have it on the show notes really to talk about, but it's it's actually a pretty decent interview, I thought, with uh the Kasdans and they do just kind of confirm in there that um well, it wasn't that's in that not the Kardashians, interview. right? That's that? the Kasdans, right? That's not the Kardashians, that's no, the Kasdans. Totally right? different okay. TV right. show. Just, yeah. just trying to get them right. Okay. Um, continue. But the in at the beginning they just they have a they basically mention that we've got a confirmation that he does call him uh hand or hand, I should say, like hand. hand. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is cool, but that was, yeah, that oh, was definitely intentional. Now you're not listening to the audio book, are you, Albert? No, this one's I'm reading. I almost because thought I, I did because I, I saw Because it sounded like he's like Leia was calling him hand. I, oh, I don't know. Audio book. Yeah. in the audio, but I don't, maybe I'm losing my mind and maybe I'm thinking, I don't know, but it sounded that way hmm. a few times when Leia was talking to Han via the hollow. I, I don't know why, but anyway, uh, Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no. Um, I was just merely mentioning that the um, in the Star Wars show, there's a, that particular interview with the Kasdans is, is really good. It's got some good stuff in there. I mean, they don't really give a whole lot. Um, but the I thought it was interesting. The one thing that stood out there, if we could just jump into that real quick, in, and I'll let Jonesy speak to the trailer, the TV spots. But um, he mentioned that Kira and Han, Han have a, like, now I'm saying it, Han. Kira and Han... <laughs> Have a well, shared... you sound like me mispronouncing names now. <laughs> yeah, this is right. great. Yeah, it's still it's your uh, infecting me. Um, <laughs> but the uh, yeah that they've got a shared background that's really rough, and I think that all plays in with that one line that we got from one of the first trailers, which is um, "I know who you really are." You know that that particular line looks like there is going to be something there. Um, this is all pure speculation, but based on what the Kazan said in that interview, and then you tie that back to that first trailer. It does sound like something happened in their early childhood um, that he is either running away from or trying to cover up or, you know, may play a part in this at some point. So kind of neat. But yeah, Jonesy, what about you? Do you get, do you, uh, for crew risk and the Star Wars show, did you get a chance to watch those with thoughts on there? Yeah, I watched them all and uh, echo a lot of the same comments you have. The thing that I'm getting more and more excited about is I'm really enjoying the dynamic between Han and Chewie. It seems like they really 
focused on that relationship. So I'm, I'm excited to see how that plays out throughout the movie and how it evolves. Um, but yeah, it was the first time I'd really seen John Kasdan speak before. I, oddly enough, uh, Lawrence Kasdan's always been the one to speak in a lot of the Force Awakens thing that I'd watched. And uh, it just shocked me how alike they are. It's like his mini <laughs> And Oh, it's it's insane, like how much he is. And when he imitates him, it's like, no, dude, you don't really have to try. You <laughs> you just sound like him all yeah, the right. time. That, you can't turn it off. Right. But no, it, it was a good episode. I, I really did enjoy it. And it was a nice, I like these little peaks behind the scenes, especially with the writing. I like to see how these stories evolve and, and kind of where they have to, where they come from or where they go to. And uh, those are always fun. But, there was, yeah, no, those same kind of comments though. There was one particular thing in the Star Wars show too, um, when they were talking about uh, kind of what to your point, Jonesy, about the dynamic between Chewbacca and, and Han and, and just their relationship, uh, they mentioned that they actually wrote out all of Chewie's lines so that Alden yeah. knew exactly what was being said. So he had the full context of what you know Chewie's responses were so that way he could play off of it. And I can you can definitely see it. I think it's. I mean, I think it, I'm it just shocked sense. that that's, I'm shocked that that's a revelation. Right, though. right. That's uh, exactly me, right. That's what stood out to me. It's like, whoa, I guess. So what did they didn't do that with the old stuff? Was it allowed? You no, know, was Harrison no, Ford allowed to interpret that? When I, when I did it, they, we just flew by the seat of our pants and yeah. I shook my finger at him. No, yeah. I, I, I said, I George, think, nobody talks like this. <laughs> they didn't listen to me. Sorry, I'm trying kid. to remember like some of the <laughs> old, awful. Um, original trilogy interviews where, or like behind the scenes. And I'm I'm thinking Peter may he may have just made noises and stuff. I thought he I, did the the like they did with uh, Vader, where the guy you know uh, Prowess would say the line and it would sound awful. Right, it didn't. You know, of course we well, say that now. Plus yeah. his accent, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I don't know if, if Peter just kind of said the line because you got to imagine they would when they're on the Death Star and he says you you said it, Chewie. Where did you dig up this old fossil? You know, like you know, it seemed very flawless to me. So I don't know, Han maybe just. Or Harrison just kind of, you know, he's Harrison. He just can, I guess he's pretty good at improvising. I I don't know. But anyway. I just hope it's not more fodder for that Alden needed all this extra help. Because I don't, I don't know. To me, this is just normal. There's there's probably a lot more interaction and dialogue. When, I, when I'm trying to, I'm trying to play through all the scenes in the original trilogy in my head. Where would it have been necessary for Harrison Ford to know what he was saying? Cause a lot of it was just reactions and things like that. It, like from what I can remember, I mean, there was a little bit like you pointed out, but most of well, it even with to R2 be as well. Orders. Like, you know what I mean? With R2, it's a way that we all kind of understand R2 when he does his beeps and boops and, and all that stuff. We kind of get what he's going with it. I guess that's more of a tone thing. So maybe, I don't know. It and, is. And some are better at improv too, right? So they're a little more yeah. comfortable with, with some of that, but I just hope it's not fodder for people giving him a hard time, especially if, if maybe some some of the right tone isn't struck uh, when the movie comes out, but nah, nah. But anyway, hey Mike. Right. Well, let's yes, hey, yes, um, sir. I just want to let the uh, listeners know and let you guys know that as we're recording, uh, we have breaking news. It looks as though Mara Jade may be written into episode nine here. I don't know if you guys caught this. Um, I'm I don't know why you would bring up garbage like that, <laughs> or why you would even try to ruin my mood. You think my hate, or well, I wouldn't say hate. My hate is strong with this, so let's let's just move on. All right, that was a joke we were talking about. There, some yeah, some yeah. ridiculous website. And I'm not even going to give them their name because they put out a bunch of junk. But um, no, it's just to rile me up. <laughs> they that's, ran this article, all... and I just had to do it to get my yeah, going. But, so. Yeah, exactly. You're welcome, it's everyone. Jades. Yeah, yeah, great. Thank you. Now I'm going to be grumpy the rest of the show, and everyone's been complaining that I've been grumpy. So it's it's Albert's fault this week, everybody. So anyway, yep. let's let's get into uh, our Patreon questions, and then we'll get into some other. Uh, questions from our feedback there. Um, and the legend from Discord, Cab, has one. And uh, this the the first one, I remember in the past we talked about this. You know, they mentioned the Yoda thing and, of course, Obi-Wan. You know, the main characters and everything is in the Old Republic and stuff. But the second part of the question is what really I liked, and I want to get to that. But we'll we'll go with the first one here. One, uh, one character get their own movies. Uh, which character would you guys like to see? get their own spinoff or maybe a trilogy like that. They seem to be going that direction with the trilogies and maybe not so much the spinoffs now. Maybe that's a better way of looking at it. Uh, Jonesy, which, which character would you pluck? I know what uh, Albert will do. He'll do the show clown club or whatever the heck his name is there. <laughs> no, that's not uh, Therm's, yeah, a, Therm's yeah, a pretty, yeah, he's in the run <laughs> too, right? Therm, that's right. That was my answer. Oh, versus Godzilla. oh my God. I <laughs> forgot all about him till now, <laughs> but seriously, 
Yeah, I've got seriously. A, yes, I've got a couple. Like one, I'd really love to see like a Republic Commandos uh, movie. I know that's yeah, not that's, a that character, but it's a it's a group. But if I had to go to one character, quite honestly, I think I want to see like Asajj Ventress. I, I really enjoyed the um, Dark Disciple novel, and Quinlan Voss is another character who was interesting. I don't know that I want to see a whole movie of Quinlan Voss, but we have seen some of Ventress and we've seen a little of her arc like in pieces across the Clone Wars in particular. Mm -hmm. But it would be, I think it would be really interesting to see kind of that Night Sisters and, and all these other types of things. Like if you just step back and I think if you think of who could have a true arc, um, Asajj Ventures for me kind of starts surfacing up that list. Ahsoka is a really natural one to try to say that we'd like to see, but we have seen a, we have a lot of screen time with Ahsoka for a chunk of her life, not all of it, but for a chunk of her life. And so I think I'd rather see something with Asajj. Now, let me ask you this. Would you, the, the trick question here is if you're going to do that, would you do uh, a movie adapt, adaptation of the novel that, that came out a few years ago? Would you do that? Or would you, or is that too much like, oh, well, we'll we kind of know what's going to happen anyway. Or, or what, like what time frame would you go with her character? That's a really good question. I, probably go towards the night sister slash what drove her to count Dooku um, type of section. So this is the early, I don't know, adult, yeah. Yeah, ad adolescent, post adolescent period, you know, so we, we've seen a little bit of it, but really dive you know deep into it and see what, what drove her out of that. Well, because she is kind of older than Ahsoka when we see them, yeah. go, she's like maybe five years, six years. I was older. equated her to like Anakin's age. Yeah. All, a little bit younger, but, but we're yeah. more closer to that side of the fence. So, yeah, I, I do like that would be interesting to I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of torn. Like, I'd like to see the novel adapted as a movie. Like, I, I'm curious if they would do that with the, like a novel like that and just bring it on the, the screen. I'm wondering if they would try that. I don't think they would, but it'd be kind of interesting if they would even flirt with that. Maybe that's the perfect place to flirt with that. But uh, Albert, what do you what do you think? Who would you take in? Hmm. Oh. Uh... Boy, that's a hard one because I think in well, for I'd like to see something. Well, dang it, I don't know. I was gonna say like Phasma Snoke, just because those were two characters that I really, you know, clung to in in uh, the Force Awakens, and I'd like to see. I'm maybe not that, taking the bait. I'm not. No, taking yeah, the bait. I'm not. I'm not trying to set you up either. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Um, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but you know, Lando stands out for me just because of maybe I'm just caught up in all the hype of. Um, solo right now, but um, you know, we've always talked about Plagueis and Sheev, maybe a Sheev movie, that whole thing. You go with Malgus and Bane, those guys. I, 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 Ahsoka is another one that, like Jonesy said, is kind of obvious, and and maybe this is just to tack on to what you said. She's just got so much, she does have a lot of screen time, and it's just kind of now it's all over the timeline, so it's like really hard to like, where do you find time to put, you know, dedicate to all that? There's there's a glaring obvious choice in Yoda, and I know they've talked about that as being a potential one because that's just I mean you're you're not limited to anything really that could be anywhere um, at any given time over the course of like 800 years, um, so that would be interesting to see. But I think it, I, I'm a, I guess I'm, I want a bad guy movie or a bad guy kind of character, so I'd say some kind of a Sith or maybe even just Boba Fett would be awesome, would be cool to see at some point. But I know we got some of him in Clone Wars, so. Yeah, I don't know who I would actually go for, to be honest. Uh, I would like to maybe see, like, a, if it's a Boba Fett thing, kind of, like, similar, like, Han, like, you got the smugglers getting together, the crew, I'd like to see maybe a Boba Fett aspect where he's getting trained by Cad Bane or something like that. That might be kind of interesting to see, that whole aspect, like, they were going to do the under, Star Wars Underworld, like, the seedier side of things. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would I, be I like pretty the idea of a bounty hunter movie you know right i don't know right yeah, Ocean's Ocean's Hunter, but i don't want style. the good guys yeah. to win in this i want them to yeah but you know what i mean because even like in um let them be bad yeah like well like in rogue one right that was pretty dark every no one made it out alive but yet they got the plan so there was you know this light i want something just to really just be bad like it didn't go well for anybody that was good in the movie and the bad guys win they they can lose later on in another movie or another trilogy or book or whatever but just something that was a little bit more one-sided than that in that aspect. Well, we could do Rogue 2, the many Bothans that died. We could do that. <laughs> I mean, that would be interesting. But uh, all right. Now, this, the interesting part of this question, uh, what actor would you like to see in a Star Wars movie? And I'm probably going to get laughed at. 
And I don't know why, but but I like this guy more and more every day. He seems like a down to earth guy. And I think he would fit as a Jedi master somewhere along the line. I, I can't see him being a bad guy, but that is Keanu Reeves. I, I know that you're probably going to laugh at me because all you think is Bill and Ted, but I see John Wick now. So, you know, I think he would be, yeah, that would be the Luke Skywalker that we wanted to have. I in just the threw last everything Jedi. in the trash. Really? <laughs> Microphone trash. Why? Yeah. Why? Why would you? Why? I think if he knows. I, I had the food. same thought. I did. Oh, you did? Briefly. Oh, yeah, all right. Briefly. Briefly. Yeah. Oh, you're not gonna. You're not with me. It was me. just a passing weakness. It was a. It was a fleeting moment, and you're like, no, no, I can't have that. Yeah, I can't hear a Jedi going, whoa, you know. But anyway, I don't know. What, what are you? What about you, Albert? Who would you, if you could pick anyone to act for a certain role or whatever? Because I see Keanu playing some kind of a Jedi or something. Maybe Luke's son, long lost son, out of nowhere. I don't know. I'm just you know dreaming. But uh, what what about you, Albert? I what do you like? What do you Keanu think? I, I like. I like the. He's a. He's a good person. Like. Uh, I do like that. I don't know if I can see him in Star Wars. Maybe just slightly above Clint Howard, but um, oh, oh my God. I think uh, I love when you throw like jokes that we were like behind the scenes that we have, and then in the middle of the show you find a way to get it in yeah, the show. I'll get it in there somewhere. I, I do. I do like that. But continue. So I guess I'm gonna go with with two young actors that um I've really just started to like a lot, and that's uh, Tom Holland, who um plays Spider Man right now. Um, that guy is just amazing. He can do anything. Um, and he's only like 21 years old. So I don't know where you would put him in there, but he's just one of these, you know, young aspiring actors that's got a lot going for him. And I think he'd be really cool. And the other ones are Texas boy, Ty Sheridan. And yes, he was in ready player one, but, um, I think he's a good, he's another kind of down to earth guy. Although he had a photo shoot that just came out. That was a little odd. I just kept looking at the pictures. So if he didn't get a chance to go look at it, it's a little weird, but I think both of those guys have a lot of talent and they seem really down to earth. They seem very grounded. It would be cool to get them into a big franchise like this and let them run with it. All right. Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, I don't, I don't have one for an answer, but I actually do have a clear answer, but there were a few notable mentions like Gary Oldman can play anything. Right. I mean, how many movies have we seen? You're like, I don't even know if that's Gary Oldman, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And Oh yeah. There was rumors. He was going to, yeah, he was going to be in the force awakens. There was rumors about that. Yeah, I, I yeah. mean, I don't know what I'd want him to play, but I think he could just do anything. The other one is like Morgan Freeman, because why the hell not? I mean, we <laughs> well, can't get enough. Else. We yeah, can't I mean, get we enough Morgan Nielsen, Freeman right? anyway. Yeah, he we should just Liam. narrate the damn thing. <laughs> oh yeah, the long but, time ago in a galaxy. Yeah, he should do the voiceover for that. But uh, but the one I came back to, and I actually have a part for him too, oh, is geez. Benedict Cumberbatch as Thrawn. I oh think yeah, would, everyone says that every. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just. He just has the look, you know, that really square, you know, chiseled kind of cheekbone structure and all that. There's probably more detail than I've ever given on a man's face, but that's okay. <laughs> the show but, definitely but he's got is that, not going the way I thought it would go, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but he's just got that rich voice and everything else, the posture. I mean, just what we've seen him do in other, in other movies is, you know, he's just perfect. So I know it's cliche, but man, he is just striking as a, as a Thrawn um, mold for that. All right. Can I cool. throw uh, Margot yeah, yeah, Robbie in there too? Uh, As what? Yeah, if you want. I don't know. I, just, I think don't even don't even don't. St th yeah, I know where you're going with this. No, I'm just not. Stop. No, I you're saw, going to Mara Jade, aren't no, you? No, I'm you're not. Yeah. I promise you, I'm not. I was thinking about yourself, uh, I Tanya. I don't know if you guys caught Shaver that. Head. Yeah, Shaverhead. Shaverhead, no. she could be Ventress. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. All right, Damn, we can do that. Right there, Jonesy. Good job. All right, there we go. Good job. Good casting call. One. Maybe Ryan should get in touch with you. All right, let's get into a uh, next question by another Discord legend, Utini. He fears Utini. that episode uh, nine will wrap up the sequel trilogy, but not the Skywalker s saga as a whole. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, initially, we go into this, like, The Force Awakens and even The Last Jedi was sold on it being the Skywalker saga. And it seems it sh obviously shifted, uh, even despite what they said, you know, it's about family, this, that, and the other. Um, and of course, I. I, in my mind, and I, you can go back last summer, it may have been in the fall, I can't remember when I said it, where I said that, you know, because we were going back and forth debating about Ray and, and all this and that, and I said, well, maybe episode nine is it, that's the end of it, and the Skywalker saga is over, and then we all move on to these other, like, you know, Ryan's got his trilogy, the the, the Game of Thrones people have their trilogies, and that's where they're going to go. Favreau and his. Yeah, well, yeah, his, whatever he's doing and stuff like that, so I, uh, that's kind of where I think they were going and that just popped in my head 
a while ago. And I think everyone's starting to get that feeling because it seems like even George with his rough draft or whatever, and they borrowed some of it a little bit of what he was doing. I think that's where he was going with it anyway. So I don't know. Uh, Jonesy, what do you think? This is tough. I, I mean, we don't, I don't even know where to go with this. The, I think the harder question that is like a follow-up to this one is whether or not as fans were ready for the Skywalker saga to end. And that's a really fascinating question to hear people discuss because some are absolutely ready. You know, let's end this. Let's just have a clear cut finish. I can die knowing that the saga is over in this regard while others are like, no, I really would love for this just to be open-ended and we have a kind of a happier ending. And, but I don't know, we got to see where this story goes with Ben in particular, you know, is he the only Skywalker line left? And then from there, but I, uh, it's a tough question, Udini. I, I, I'm not really sure. Yeah. I'm not really sure where to go with this. Uh, Albert, any uh, words of wisdom on uh, for Utini here? Mm, I think I, I, I think so. Personal opinion, I think Star Wars Saga is over. I don't see them bringing this back, at least not in my lifetime. I think it's a dragon. I think it's sleeping in years from now. Again, when my kids are older, um, they'll probably find a way to bring that back because you got to let this thing simmer for a little while. We've been going on. You know, we all know it's it's supposed to end. I think it's more powerful rather than keep the money machine kind of going with all this other stuff that you've got now. You've got all these IPs. You've got all this new talent. Let them run, create their own stuff. Let this thing just sit and simmer and bring it back, you know, 20 years from now. Find a way to tie it back to here. Like there's something we missed or something that's been sleeping or, you know, uh, dormant this whole time. I think that would be more powerful and would pay off, um, in, in, you know, the long, long game kind of thing. So I think it would I think it is kind of done for now um but so that's not to say you, they won't bring it back later if you have a hard stop and you end it now does that open the door for an actual reboot really not even all that far down the road like in the five to ten year range i think it's i think it, it's all predicated upon the success of these other movies if they start tanking right and and things aren't going well for whatever reason i think they pull the, you know they break the glass and and start reviving it or do a reboot in some way but I think if if these things have their own legs and they start to mature, much like this, you know, whole th- the three th- uh, trilogies we got do at some point, I don't think you necessarily have to go back there. I think they I think they go on without having to go that you know go down that route. All right, I'll be the bad guy because I'm I've been labeled the bad guy of late, so I'll be the bad guy. The problem that Disney will have going forward is the fans don't really care about the other characters other than. The Skywalkers and, and all that other stuff. You can make all these other sequels and make great, compelling characters and everything. At the end of the day, everybody wants to see the Skywalker saga. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. And I don't know what's going to happen going forward because of what happened with The Last Jedi. Now, I'm going to see nine. I'm not boycotting or anything like that. And The Last Jedi did not ruin my fandom at all. I'm just trying to deal with it. But, um, or, of, fall in love with it like everybody else i'm getting there i'm trying to get there and hopefully i will get there but i i think at the end of the day the, the skywalker saga is what matters to most of us maybe some you know maybe this fandom is split into like 700 directions these days so who who knows yeah that's fair I, you know what i mean so i mean it's i mean there's something for everybody i i don't mind it i personally don't mind if they end it to be honest because like jonesy had said okay at least i know in my lifetime i grew up with this it's over it's done with but then again a part of me wants for my daughter to have her Skywalker saga and and have that theme go from when I was a kid to her and to her kids and then just to keep going on and on and on. Now, the counter argument is, all right, how many times can you tell the same story over and over, the Skywalker saga over and over and over? You know what I mean? So I get that point of it. So it's kind of hard. I mean, I I like the idea, like you said, Albert, leave it open-ended so in 10, 15 years, because I agree with you. I think after nine, they need to put the brakes on the main the episodic thing for a little while. Cause I think we've all kind of lost our minds over it the last. So, uh, so maybe it's a good segue to the second part okay. of Utini's question of what thoughts do we have to make episodes one through nine? What do they need to do in episode nine to make one through nine really feel like a nonology, which is, I had to think about that for a second, but how do you make tie it all together to actually make it feel like a saga? So we've seen, J.J. Abrams bring this up, that this is going to tie everything together, prequels and everything. So what is it that you guys think we actually need to see for that to actually happen? 
Uh, well, I, that I even said before when JJ opened his mouth and said, it's going to bring it everything together. I had no idea how he could do it. But then Dave does his time. Well, it wasn't time traveling. It was more of a different realm, you know, with that, the whole episode there. And I thought, all right, well, there's a possibility here where you could go in there, but you got to do it right. You can't overplay that hand in, in a way where it, it seems cheesy. and Because that's hard to pull off, I think, on the big screen live action stuff. So I don't know how they can tie it all, go in the loop and come back around and, and make it all go through. I, I don't know how they can do it. Maybe JJ's a genius at the end of the day. He's certainly a, a you know better writer and director than I could ever be. So, you know, I, I hope he can. I don't know how he can do it, but uh, I, I don't know. It's it's a mystery to me. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you there too because I, I clearly remember doing that show when we tackled this question, or at least tried to, when we, we talked, when it wasn't a question, we just talked about the fact that he had made that comment that he was going to tie all these together. And I, I think I literally said, good luck, buddy, because I can't, he's a big, bigger man than me. I don't know how at this point you tie it all together. And maybe he wasn't speaking, maybe we're taking it too literal, right? I, Probably, I don't, because that's what we do. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know that he, even still, like if he, if he really did try to take all those, you, you have to think of what's the common thread through all of them. And it's, you know, the common thread is the Skywalker bloodline and we don't, we're not going to have it, right? If, if Ray is not a Skywalker, we've got only Kylo Ren and how you tie that back to the events of the first trilogy, excuse me, the second trilogy and, and the force awakens. I, I don't know. I don't, it's, I guess you could do it. I don't know if it's going to pay off like we expect it to. Um, certainly he's got some huge, uh, expectations that he's got to meet to do that though. But oh, I think now that, yeah. And, yeah. and now that Carrie Fisher's gone, I think it really comes back to Luke. So we have to, they need to find a way to make it feel like Anakin and Luke still matter. Right. Yeah. That's or, exactly. or have mattered. Right. Yeah. Uh, Cause I mean, now you've, you've got this disconnected feeling that, that I think we're hearing a lot from the fandom and from, you know, within our circle and from all of the folks on discord. And so that was how, maybe me. me. <laughs> no, no, okay. you're not alone, man. There's a lot of people who feel this way. So it, it's important to kind of see that, okay, how do we make these characters matter? Like those other movies weren't just moments in time. They actually had some sort of uh, impact, you know, or there can still be an impact from what had, has already happened. So is it that we finally connect the lessons and the failures, the things that Yoda was talking about in Last Jedi? You know, is it something as simple as Yoda or Obi-Wan, maybe Ewan McGregor is Obi-Wan and Luke coming together at some point more than just a, cameo at the end of the movie everybody with smiles and you know nudge nudges on the shoulder and things like that but something that gives us more than the perceived notion of just throwing it all away which which i think is what's really given some people some heartache right it, it just feels like we've we've moved beyond it and not really given enough as to why that's really really important and so i don't even think mark's coming back for nine which makes things even weirder if you ask me. So I don't know how you thread that needle. Uh, I'm just not going to buy that. I, well, I don't I'm think not I either. I mean, that, yeah. who knows? I mean, I think they would bring them back, but who knows? It's a lot of, nobody knows anything until they start filming in what, a, a, a month or so or whenever they start doing things. So I, I don't know, but I, I just don't know how they're going to go from here to there. I, I don't know how you can do that. Other than that, what now this is maybe me small thinking here and I can't think bigger than maybe JJ here where like, again, I said, we're, we're in this realm where Ezra was and, you know, Ray, I, I said that would have been a, a beautiful moment in the cave. If, if something like that happened with Ray and, you know, our minds got melted because it was some kind of big force cosmic thing and, and stuff like that. Now the, the other part of me, the rational side says, I don't know if you can pull that off on screen. So who knows where they're going to go? It, it's a very interesting question. I just, I just don't think we have an answer at all. At yeah, least that's tough, think, teeny, but yeah, that's yeah. a good one though. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we have one. All right, so let's go on to our next one from JW, um, from another legend from the Discord and a Patreon member. So thank you. He wants to know about a post credit scene in Solo. Now we've debated this before on the show. I'm really not in favor of it because I think it's, although I don't mind it, obviously, in a Star Wars story. Then obviously I wouldn't want it in an episodic. I don't even know if I'd want it in like, let's say, Ryan's trilogy or or even the Game of Thrones trilogy. Like, I like if it's like a little standalone thing. I, I don't mind it, but 
I, I I think I'd rather just leave it with Marvel and other movies and not Star Wars per se. It'd be fun, but I, I don't think I'd want to see it. What about you guys? They fit better in the Marvel movies, I think. Um, but I, I think he was, Jada was asking this a little bit more as a tie-in to um, his concern about the production issues that this would, and if a post credit scene were to happen, I think would justify his concerns that it's just a vehicle now to set up another solo movie or Lando spinoff. And, um, and I don't know that, I don't know, the anthology movies were always touted as standalones. And I think, I mean, we're only on our second one, clearly, but I think they're staying pretty true to that. I think there's going to be a clear arc to Solo to where it begins and ends. It is definitely an open-ended movie, right? Because we know there's more, you know, we know the door's left open by default. There's more to it. There's more things that happen in the next 10 years that we haven't seen. Um, so I think that door is just naturally left open. But I think we're going to see this 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 true arc, this transition phase for Han, which I think is going to be interesting. So I don't I don't think they need a post credit scene just because I don't think you have to entice or start to whet the appetite for whatever's coming next. And if you look at Marvels, some of these that they've done are very obscure and they're they're more Easter eggish than anything else. Of really, and some of them do set up the movies, but they're really more Easter eggish for people. Yeah. Albert? Um. Yeah, I don't know that I would be okay with it. Just kind of like what you said. It's just I actually don't mind them. And 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 to be fair, if I'm being completely honest about the Marvel movies, I always like they were cool to see, but I always felt like just not fulfilled. Like it was, I I would sit around and wait for all the credits to roll, and I'd get that one you know 15 second clip or 30 second clip, and did it really have a big play off you know payoff in the movies? No. Was it cool to see just because it was? you know, something to wait for. Yeah, that was kind of neat, but I don't know that it fits in the Star Wars line uh, in the Star Wars uh, movies themselves um, because it doesn't feel Star Warsy. But then again, I said that a lot about a lot of things going into The Last Jedi or coming out of The Last Jedi saying that things were, um, they couldn't do this or they can't do that. And they did. And so I was proven wrong. So uh, again, I, I've said it before on the show many times, we're in a, a kind of in a brand new era. Um, the rules have changed and there's not a playbook. So all I'm going to say is if they do it, great. Uh, just don't screw it up and, and get, make, maybe make it substantial, a little bit more substantial, kind of like the Jonesy's point. I don't want Howard the Duck, right? Because I don't need Howard the Duck. It's cool. Yes, you need Howard the Duck in your life. <laughs> I do, but not for this show. Um, no, and yes, for this show. But, but, but you know, Howard the Duck, and, and, and I'm, making, I'm, I'm picking on that one because that was cool to see, but it was really just, you know, playing to the fan base. We're not going to probably, well, I shouldn't say that. I hope we don't get a fan Howard the Duck movie again reboot. Um, oh, I hope we do because the first I one was perfect, and you can't you can't really redo that one. But I want another one just to aggravate you. Um, <laughs> <Because>. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, you know, don't screw it up. Give me something substantial. That would be really cool if you're going to do it. Do it right. Um, you know, do something different so it feels uh, so it feels different. So it doesn't feel like just the Marvel stuff that that's been out there or the other movies that have done it in the past. I mean, I'm okay with it. In, in the little spinoffs here. And I, I think I'd be cool with it if it, it like sets up, like you said, some significance like with Lando and that, because I imagine if Solo does pretty well, well enough where they'll say, all right, we're going to green light another movie with so this, these cast of characters. Cause I think the, the cast seems pretty darn good. Even uh, Alden. I know we've, we, you know, we got to struggle with him not being Harrison Ford, but, but I think if he does a pretty decent job, we can, you know, move on and, and you know, the, Donald Glover needs to have another role with Lando. Like they need to do it again. I, in my mind, because unless he tanks it when we finally see it and I say, all right, I was, I was completely wrong on that. I haven't seen everything, but what I have seen, I like. So I, I think, and I, I still like the idea of them changing hands with the Falcon over and over again, but I don't think that'll happen. But in any case, we'll find out soon enough. Right. So, all right, let's go to uh, our next one from Imperial Moonwalker from discord. And this one I might not even answer, to be honest, because this is probably a question I shouldn't answer. If uh, you were asked to write episode nine, how would you complete the story ox for the four major sequel trilogy characters? Poe, Finn, Ray, Kylo, and Albert, what would you do? This is actually kind of a tough one, to be honest. I mean, all I could say with Poe and Finn is maybe give them more significance, I guess you could say, because Finn was cut out a lot now that I think about it, because when we go back to the deleted scenes and everything. And Poe kind of, I don't know, I would like to see a more leadership role with Poe, but the other two, I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll throw it to you, Albert. What do you think? Mm, so, man, yeah, this one probably requires way more 
show prep time is, than I gave it. Yeah, this is probably uh, an ep- an episode in, in of itself, yeah. to be honest. But um, so I'll just keep it super, you know, thirty thousand foot view. Poe, I would like to see him being like a high ranking leader, um, maybe taking over like an admiral. Or now I don't see I don't see him as a as a you know a war strategist in any way. I don't see him as an admiral, but I see him like in Leia's role at some point, right? Because I think that would be, I mean. That would be a really cool arc to see where he came from, you know, where he was in The Force Awakens in the very beginning of The Last Jedi. We got his, we got a transformation of him um, and in, sorry, in The Last Jedi, we got a transformation at the very end. Uh, and I'd like to see that continue. And I think the natural evolution for him is to fill into that Leia role where he is leading people, right? He's um, more than just, you know, a hero because that's what he was. He was like, oh, you're Poe, you're the hero, that kind of thing. Yeah. I want to see him into that leader role, kind of like what Leia was trying to get uh, Finn to do. Uh, for Finn, maybe an admiral role, right? Some type of, you let him le- exercise his ability to, um, you know, strategically uh, counter, or move ships into place and all that stuff. Like, I can see him in, in, in going into there. And maybe having those two characters be like the Holdo and Leia of, you know, this new kind of era where they're really, they become really good friends. And um, there's a, you know, a special bond between the two because of what they've been through together. For Ray, I don't think she's got much of a choice. I think they've pretty much, you know, set her her path as her destiny's been set. Um, she's, you know, the last Jedi, and she's now got a whole, you know, uh, Jedi order to build up. Or I'm using Jedi. You don't see my fingers, but I'm doing that in quotes. Whatever that looks like going forward, I think she's the only, she's obviously the only one that can do it. We're, we're not going to have uh, Leia in the next movie, so unless they're going to introduce some other Force character that's been in hiding. Ezra, you know, uh, Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves as Ahsoka, whoever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be interesting, yeah, exactly. to say the least. But but yeah, unless they're going to introduce some other force sensitive characters uh, that are on the light side, at least, or, you know, not on the dark side, then she's got a lot of work to do. And uh, yeah, I think she's just kind of she's pigeonholed into doing something like that. Uh, and then the other one he had on here was Kylo, which. um. I've been That's pretty rough on me. Kylo, yeah. And Just I'm, let him die. Yeah, and I'm going to go, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'd let him die. I, I I want him to die. I don't mind him being, like, I'm rehashing, like, another three episodes here. I don't mind him dying, or I actually do want him to die. I don't mind a redemption arc, but like I said, he's got, his sins are so grave um, that I don't know, I, I really struggle with what is it, and given that Snoke's no longer there, you know, is it Hux, is it something else, what is it that he's going to do? that he's going to be able to redeem himself. It's got to be something significant because if, if you go by the trope, your redemption has to be equal to the sins that you've you know committed or at least that you've been involved with or whatever, right? So either he's got to save an entire galaxy, uh, literally, or save a planet or save, you know, maybe it's just Ray. I don't know. Somewhere, it's got to be pretty significant. There has to be some meat in that redemption arc. Otherwise, it's going to feel kind of flat, and I don't think I'm going to get the payoff that I want from it. So, uh, but yeah, let him die. Jonesy, what say you? <laughs> <laughs> yes we got one yeah um yeah it's only so two po, tonight so it's not too yeah, bad yeah okay. right <laughs> yeah Poe's kind of i'm in the same boat he's pretty much got to be a general at this point now because that's the path they've set him on and i think that works i think we still want to see him in a cockpit flying around being the flyboy type of thing and you know with rogue one we saw that with a general in an x-wing so that seems plausible uh finn man i don't i don't know where finn goes from here he's in a tough spot because he's, he's been playing this middle ground for so long. And what would be a little ironic if he was in charge of like recruiting or something like that, you know, our training programs, I mean, something a little, you know, not overly uh, flashy, but you know, but yeah, kind of what Albert said, probably more leadership position in the, in the resistance or whatever evolves from this Ray, her path is set. That doesn't seem to really um they're not going to have to deviate from that kylo is an interesting one though because i really do just want to see him be an all-out bad guy especially if snoke does not come back um because you have to i think where star wars is really done well for itself is when you have a clear bad guy even when you blur those lines like with jet or return of the jedi we still have something to root against even if that shifted to the emperor so if snoke's gone entirely um, then Kylo has to fit that bill. I mean, and, and uh, I know the redemption arc and things like that, which I've kind of got issues with on the Vader front too, from a discussion standpoint, but I just, I don't see how they can really go that angle. Well, there's two know, different with the, things with the redemption. As I've always said, the force may 
see him as redeemed, the cosmic force and whatnot, but the galaxy isn't forgiving you. Sorry, it ain't happening. Yeah, and I guess I'm yeah. more on the galaxy's front. Yeah, <laughs> I well, yeah, well, I agree. Vader, yeah. Vader is, was a no. He didn't get redeemed right, in the eyes of this, the galaxy, but yeah, go ahead. And like we've talked about with Kylo, it is so personal what he has done, right? That's personal. And it, I, it's really difficult to come back from something like that. Um, but I didn't really answer the question where this is really hard uh, because <laughs> we're, we're, at the, we're at the point of the story where we don't really have many options uh, from at least the way that our minds are working with, with where we've been in the first two uh, films in this trilogy. So we're um, we're a bit set on some baths here, and I, I Kylo's about the only one who's really got some wiggle room that they could do something with. And um, but I, quite honestly, I hope they keep him on the path that he's on and just make him more defined. All right. Well, let's move on to uh, Otto. Who's oh, we have one more? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Otto. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, Otto. Yeah, yeah. I was getting to. I was yeah. getting to Otto. Yeah, I wouldn't forget yeah. the Patreon member. Yeah, come on. Yeah, new one. Yeah, new yeah. here. Yes. So with the death of Luke Skywalker, almost certain he returns as a Force Ghost. I don't know if he's going to do that. again. We kind of hinted at that earlier uh, in Episode Nine. It's also I mean Episode Eight. It's also interesting that Yoda came back and was able to interact with the real world. Now he's th- this is interesting because I wasn't even thinking this on the radio radar here, but you know, I was thinking maybe snow could return some way. I wasn't even thinking interacting or whatever, but uh, his, his, what are your thoughts on Snoke returning in a similar manner as Yoda with the same type of abilities, which would be kind of interesting. I always assumed he'd come back in a different form because I get a feeling like he's, I don't know, like he can just possess some kind of a body or just, you know, find a way to relive, I guess you could say, I, I don't know. Um, Jonesy, well, I'll throw it to you because I'm actually on board yeah. with that theory right there. Okay, if, if he were if he were to come back, and I agree with Otto here that that he would have to have some sort of abilities that interacted with the real world, even if that was some sort of you know possessing Kylo. To I mean, this is where you could probably finally redeem Kylo in some way. But if he actually took over Kylo and and forced his actions and influenced those actions even more directly than he has for a long time, uh, which I think. Uh, Longtime listener Katie has has suggested for a long time with a lot of her research uh, in some different ways, but that type of thing would be interesting to see. I kind of think that's a bit of an out, but yeah, I, I could see a little bit of that. But if Snoke were to do this, I'm interested. Is like, how do you beat that? I mean, is that where man, maybe that's just how you 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 bind the whole trilogy together? Is then you do have your Luke's and your Yodas and and these other more powerful Force users come in and they. And and then you really do have this grand scale, you know, mystic type of battle. But, see, you couldn't that, have Obi Wan because he says I cannot interfere. But I think Luke would forego that, right? Because Luke is Luke. He's kind of you know, in the old days, yeah, Luke it's would an just interesting do, comment, yeah. right? Because I don't know if that's out of principle or what, or if at the time, you know, that was he really just, just George's. It was just how, that's how he thought of things. Like, no, once you're dead. Yeah, you can interact with others, but you really can't do anything about it. Correct. It's a spiritual yeah. type of guidance. It's not really physical anymore. It's an enlightenment. It's not, you know, you know, but at, at this point, would would Luke go and do so? I would like to see Luke haunting Kylo, to be honest, if they're going to do that. Like, that would be pretty cool if Luke coming back and kind of tormenting him and going with that, I'll see you around kid type of stuff. That would... I would enjoy that myself, but yeah, uh, even I think Mark like Hamill would be good at it. Like if he, he went like the Joker kind of Luke, oh, he'd be creepy be, as all hell. That would be kind of funny. Well, he was creepy with you know standing over him and at the bed there. So I mean, we can do it. He's got range for that. But uh, in any case, finish, sir. So what was your point? No, that that was kind of the point. Of, oh, okay. <laughs> how about you, Albert? <laughs> um, so it so we covered this in episode two seventeen. Um. In fact, I think I, that's where I threw out the theory, this particular theory because of the call lightning. So it, we were talking about what's next for scope in 217. And we got into this idea or this concept that um, that he could come back because, you know, we've got new we've got new um, abilities, I guess. Be Yoda being, you know, part of the um, he's a force ghost, but he can, you know, control the physical world. So if you really go down Snoke's path of how could he come back? What was his ultimate game plan? It would be to transcend because now he doesn't have to worry about the physical aspects of people trying to kill him or off him in any way. He can still do things in the real world and, you know, live forever, so to speak. So that that's kind of a, a recap of what we covered in that show. 
I don't know if my positions change any, any since then. Um, I still like the character. I would like to see him come back. I don't think they're going to bring him back, but I, if they don't, um, in that aspect, what would be interesting would be if they kind of just led you, you know, down this weird path of where you're starting to think that's really the case, but really it's just, like you said, it's maybe it's Snoke just messing with Kylo's head, right? It's a visions that he's seeing, you know, giving him another dynamic of him just going crazy now that, you know, maybe, maybe he's got a bunch of voices in his head. He's got Han in his head and he's got Vader in his head. He's got Luke in his head. He's got Snoke in his head. All these people that he's killed or, you know, done terrible, horrible things to, uh, they're all tormenting him and it's just, you know, making him go crazy. Maybe that's how he gets in, you know, to a, you know, a really ultimate bad guy, um, from a character development standpoint, but that would be more interesting, I think for me. And I think I could see Adam Driver, you know, doing all kinds of great things uh, in terms of uh, his acting abilities. If you were if you had all these different voices and, and people tormenting him, um, you know, and on top of all that, he's trying to lead the whole First Order now. So that's another aspect of it, I think, that would start weighing on him, too. So, but yeah, I, I like I like the the idea that he could come back in the real world. But if not, then maybe go with something a little bit more. Uh, with misdirection and, and more psychological. Fair enough. Uh, all right, now let's get into Crow the cat. I believe that's his he or she's name. I think is did I say that right, Jonesy? I think you asked earlier. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm going with it. Yeah, uh, Crow. Okay. Uh, what would the cast of Rogue One do if they survived Scarif? Uh, you know, he's got here uh, Luke and Cherit and Jin hanging out, and then R two and K two S O being buddy cops. Oh, that was my. Oh, that was no, you. I did that. Oh, that, part. that was yeah. you busting chops. All right. Well, well, I'll start with you, sir. What, what, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, he had, he was asking about. I'm assuming that he apologized if not, but um, he was saying he thinks these uh, these groups would get together. So Luke and Sherrod and Jen would probably have something in common, and then R two and KTSO. And so I thought about the R two R two and KTSO part, and I was like, man, they'd make like a great buddy cop. So I started envisioning like the 70s, early 80s type of buddy cop uh, series or movie with the music and the cars and, and things like that in my head. And it, it just, it, it went off on this weird tangent. And like 20 minutes later, I came back. I was like, oh crap. Okay, I got to write this down because the mental image I just had to share. And, and I hope somebody crazy enough, like actually, you know, shares that with me so I don't feel so silly. Um, but I, I agree that would be, that would be kind of cool. But yeah, I think Luke and Chirrut and Jet, or I think Luke and Chirrut in, in particular would probably hit it off. And that would actually be an interesting relationship to see explored because, uh, I mean, just the sheer commitment to the force that Chirrut and Baze have, it's, uh, I think Luke would learn a lot from that early on, especially at that stage of, of the movies. Jen, uh, less so. I, I I think some people want that relationship aspect of that, but clearly Cassian's already uh, made that move. So, <laughs> well, I'd like to see Cassian and uh, Han hanging out. See how that would go. Uh, that would be an interesting thing, and maybe C three PO and and K two hanging out. I'd love to see the the odd couple that that would be. That would be pretty funny. But you know, they didn't survive, and I have no problem with that. <laughs> um, uh, Albert, what do you, what do you think? What what would you think? They uh, what if they'd survived Scarif? So if I had to group them, I would say Luke, Chirrut, and Baze. Um, and I'd see Chirrut and Baze actually going out there. Cause you get, if they're going to rebuild this rebellion or sorry, build the Jedi order, uh, they're, they need a lot of people to get this thing up and running. And I can see them as recruiters going out and, you know, searching the galaxy, looking for force sensitive people, recruiting them, getting them into all positions from, you know, people that are actually going to be, Jedi Knights or whatever they call that. And, you know, even the librarians or the custodians that run the temples and all that. So I can see them going around and just, you know, kind of like uh, headhunters, so to speak, going around looking for people. And um, artifacts, yeah. What's that? And artifacts too. I yeah, can see that. right. Or yeah, working to, to do that. I mean, they're obviously force sensitive, so they would have to have some kind of role. I, I think they would work pretty closely with Luke to, to get all that going. Um, for Jen and Cassian, I don't know, go make babies. And <laughs> that's fine. Um, you got like really both of those characters and you know, we got a little hint of that at the very end. So the more, yeah. And obviously the more, the more interesting one is the R2, D2, C3PO, KTSO, buddy cops. I thought that was. And throw Chopper in there for the. That's what I said. I said throw yeah, Chopper, Chopper in there yeah. and then you got three's company or you got four of them now that are all, you know, acting silly or maybe just R2, Chopper and K2SO. That's your. Finally, we'd have a real droids like series. Oh yeah, I think we just we, we just got. found the next animated show that needs to be done. 
and not even canon, but it's just goofy, fun stuff. That yeah. that would be funny. I would um, I, I, I would think, enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe Bodie and uh, Finn have a lot to to talk about. That would be interesting to see. The traitors. Um, yes, yeah. I, I could. Yeah, I would yeah. see Bodie just yeah joining up as a soldier. Yeah, 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 I could see that. But I'd like to see that sitcom. I think it's right up there with like Buffy, Willow, and Xander, and Three's Company. Three's Company too. All right. Uh, I don't mean to sing the song. It just happened to pop Come in my head. Come on, knock on our door. Yeah, exactly. Do, 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 do. All right. Okay. We got to stop. Well, this is not the basement, no, Albert. Sorry. All right. All right. So let's get into Lind- Lyndon's uh, email. And this is probably the last question we're going to get to. And I got to summarize it here. It's basically uh, recasting of Leia so we could get the story that uh, was strongly hinted at with uh, episode nine, because episode seven was Han, obviously, and, or Han. Uh, episode eight was Luke, and then episode nine was going to be Leia, which we kind of all connected that dot, so to speak. Um, what do you thought? I don't think I. We've said this many times. I don't think they should recast it, even though that story would have been interesting. I mean, they changed Colin left, so that original plan, I guess, kind of didn't work out. So it's for me, I'm okay with not. I mean, I would love to have seen it. Don't get me wrong. I would love to see Carrie up there carrying the whole film. I mean, she always did anyway because. I mean, she was, as I've always said, and we've hinted out on the show, even on the the psychology of uh, Princess Leia or of Leia, she was still the strongest character of the whole saga. So you can't take that away from her at all. But I, I think it's best to leave The Last Jedi as her last performance. And kind of the one thing that Ryan did, I think, was an interesting moment at the end where she says, well, don't listen to me. Like, she kind of passed it off in that moment. To me, in a way, like, you know, Luke's dead and all that stuff. So it was a final, like, all right, well, go listen to Poe, not me. I'm just kind of, I'm going to go in retirement home now. <laughs> I'm going to go relax and stuff. So I, and we've discussed it before, Albert, a couple of weeks ago, I think, uh, in Jonesy. I think we said, just kind of let her, like, die off screen in a dignified way or whatever, and and we can go from there. But uh, I don't know, has your mind changed at all, Albert, or are you still... Kind of with me. I don't want to see anyone else play Leia. I just, I, that's just my own opinion. Yeah. Um, so I don't think I've ever been very candid about my official stance on this. I think I've kind of tippy toed around it because I doesn't, what I personally believe will happen is different than what I can see happening. And so I'll, let me just, I'll take two minutes to explain that. Personally, I think I've shared this on the show. I don't want to, to, like you, I don't want to see anybody else in this role. I'd rather, she's got, space sickness and she died off and now we're moving on with the story right that's me i think though if i'm looking at this objectively right and 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 now that some time has passed and this maybe this is where Lyndon's kind of going um in, in the approach of the question if you look at this objectively is is the character carrie fisher is it leia and you can make the argument that they're one and the same and you can't have one without the other but this is a franchise it is a huge character. It is a, a, a insurmountable character in this universe, pivotal character in this universe. And if they really are trying to tell the best story that they can, um, and they are, they want to stick to the original um, uh, direction, then I can see, again, objectively, I can see where someone can make the argument saying, if this is bigger than, this is bigger than Carrie Fisher. It's the character of Leia Organa. We need to move the story forward. We, there's, it is the best story that we have available. So we're, even though we said we weren't going to do it and ever, and now that time's passed, everyone's maybe, you know, not as sensitive and, and rightfully so they, they, we, we should have been, we should have been cautious and we should have been treading lightly. But now that time's passed again, I, I think I said this on the show, time heals all things. And, you know, I can see where they could do this now. Um, well, it's simple. It it's, it's kind of like Alden stepping into play. Han Solo like it's you got to get used to someone else kind of playing that iconic role of the of the big three possibly yeah and you got to put your personal feelings aside now logically you're right financially I don't think it would work like I I don't not that fans would you know say oh I'm not gonna go see well there is a section of fandom that would say that but for me personally it would feel cheapened I mean I feel like it's such a big loss that we don't have Carrie anymore to, to, to do this. So, and I don't mean that in a selfish way, like, oh, well, I need this or whatever. I mean, it's, it's horrible that she passed away. That's, you know, it's a human being. Uh, it's not just the character there. Um, so that there's that element to it. So for me, I, I just think it's better off just to let that be the last performance and just move on. And I think mm-hmm. 
you know, the, the problem going forward is, well, we don't really have the big three. As Mark kind of said a few weeks ago, in, in a solemn way, kind of my way, uh, you can't get the band back together. So, I mean, I guess it's better off to just let the new characters kind of maybe finally stand on their own and, and see where that goes. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, you know what I mean? Yeah, but go ahead. No, so just one final thought on this, and it, and it ties back to... Um, it ties back to the question about whether the so this the Skywalker saga can end or you know they continue keep it going that kind of thing. Um, so when I'm looking at my own kids, you know, and I've got five of them, uh, which is nuts. But the uh, <laughs> the boys when when they see this Han Solo movie, they're super excited. They don't care that that is not Harrison Ford. They have it is the farthest thing on their mind. And when I've talked to them just anecdotally about Leia and what would they like to see, they don't care. They want to see Princess Leia. They don't really even know who Carrie Fisher is, right? And and then that's the that's the thing. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not um, diminishing my own personal feelings or yours or any of the millions of yeah. people that feel like, hey, don't step in there, don't go in there, just leave it alone, because that that was something to us. But for well, we got to look at it. If you're Disney and you're looking at this holistically and looking at this long term, what's the best for the franchise? They're looking at these kids and they're asking themselves. Do we want to keep Luke and Vader and those guys around? My kids think they're cool characters, but I tell you right now, I've got about 120 boys that I, that I see pretty regularly as, as a Cub Scout leader. And when I go around to them and ask them, who's your favorite Star Wars character? It's Kylo Ren. Who's your second favorite Kylo character? It's a Porg. They love the original movies. Don't get me wrong. They still wear those shirts because their mom and dad buys them and they, and they make them watch those movies. But this <laughs> make is a, them. they sit them down in the so chair. You're gonna you put will this watch on. this and you will learn it exactly. No. That's what I did to my kids, and they like the characters. I'm not saying that they don't, but they're there's this isn't that's that's kind of our thing. They're into rebels, right? Those are the characters that they're clinging to now. Um, we just watched the the season, the series finale of Rebels tonight, just before we came on the air, because my kids want to see that. We didn't watch, and 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 when we're watching, when we say, hey, let's watch Star Wars. We're watching Rebels, we're watching Last Jedi, we're watching The Force Awakens. Every once in a while, we'll throw in the other ones because they like them or dad wants to see them, right? But <laughs> it's this, like, yeah, but this is daddy time. We're yeah, gonna... so they're they're into Star Wars, don't get me wrong, and that's great, and they love the classics. But there are a whole lot of, there's a lot of elements that we tend to cling on to for personal reasons that I don't really think are going to play at, at the end of the day. I don't know that they're going to play so much into some of the longer term plans that Disney really needs to be doing or thinking about doing, that they're going to do in the end. No, you make a good point, but even like my daughter... And this is just, it, it baffles me, is maybe because she's pretty much my clone, but she gravitates towards the Clone Wars more than anything. Like, she'll binge watch that all day on Netflix, and she her favorite character is Anakin, and then Ahsoka, and then Padme, and, you know, all, you know, so, so mm -hmm. forth. She loves Rey, but she actually prefers Anakin and everybody else. Like, she gravitates towards what, and, and, and it's not me, and I know people are going to say, I, I let her do her <laughs> thing. I never forced it upon her. I just kind of, it's like my father back in the day with hockey. He didn't force it upon me like it was with him, which I wish he had because I liked hockey. But that's a whole other story. But I didn't do this with her. She kind of just, she kind of idolizes me, which is a sweet thing at this point because when she's a teenager, she's going to hate me. But um, for at least for a little while. But she wants to do the things. She's into the things I am. And she gravitates towards the the Clone Wars and stuff and and uh, actually, last week she wanted to watch the finale of Rebels because Ahsoka's in it, and then she got re and she loves Sabine as well. So those characters do resonate. I see what you're saying, Albert. It, it, and I even said back five years ago you know, when we got on, and and you know the movies were announced and all this other stuff, and that within that first year, I said we got to realize that this sequel trilogy is not for us old people. It's for the next you know generation and stuff, and yeah. and, and and from there. They're going to like Kylo. They're going to like Ray. They're going to like this. We probably won't, but it's not for us. We got to get over it. And, you know, and, and even me, I struggle with it now. As you all know, our listeners know, they call me out on it and that's fine. I get that. That's, you know, but I'm going to be honest about how I feel. And, and that's just the way it is. But that was, I've always said, this isn't about me. It's about who's coming up next. And I even said on one of the shows, seeing it through my daughter's eyes is now pretty much where I want to go with it. I, I like that. I get that's, more fulfilling now than where I wanted things to go or how I wanted things to play out at, at the end of the day with the sequel trilogy. I'm kind of over that. It's just, you know, I got to work my way through all that other emotional stuff for the, all these years that I put into it. But anyway, uh, Jonesy, please 
chime in on on the on the conversation here, sir. Yeah, well, that was a great conversation. <laughs> the I don't want Leia to die. I want her to stay alive. I don't necessarily want her to be recast, though, either. That's a really weird stance to be. I would, <laughs> you I want would it like, all, right? <laughs> I, I want it all. Um, I want there to be some involvement with her off screen so that you, you get the sense that she's still involved. There's things happening, but they don't. I, I, and I see it more as a tribute to Carrie Fisher more than anything else that this character will continue to survive and will continue to influence in some, you know, in some particular way that's meaningful and, and have that be the way that we respect and pay tribute to her memory rather than um, we just kill her off screen because enough time has passed or we've got some convenient factors that, that work for us. So it's, it's not an enviable position that, that the folks writing this are in. Um, but I think that would just be such a fitting tribute that some, somehow they find a way to make that work. And then, and then you've still got books and other things that you can still do that, give her that opportunity to continue to grow and to lead and, and kind of live on in our memories and, and, you know, in, in, in our future so that we've still got this continuous character that still is surviving. And it's a way to keep that Skywalker lineage alive as well in, in some capacity. Um, again, everyone, everyone dies at some point. Right. But anyway, that's what I'd like to see. I'd like just to see that, that memory. Maybe it's just a, you know, a therapy type of thing for me or something like that. But I'd really like to see that happen. Well, I guess in my mind, it's, it's what would Carrie have said if in this situation, would she be like, yeah, we can't say those words on air. Well, that's true. But, well, <laughs> but, but what am I point being is what, what would she have thought, you know, in her mind, like, like saying, all right, well, yeah, you can recast me. That's fine. You got my blessing kind of thing. Not that she can obviously, but I would be more at peace if I knew that, she would have been okay with it. I don't know how you could rectify that at all. I don't think you can, but maybe if her daughter, Billy said, yeah, let's, I'm okay with it. I would be more okay with it. I'm, I'm kind of open to it in a way because the character, I think Carrie, you know, it's, it goes back to what she said in one of her stand-up shows is she said, well, princess Leia is me and I am princess Leia. Like it's interchangeable that we're one of the same. And I don't know, that's kind of hard to reconcile that whole separating thing, I guess. That's that's the issue that we because all have. I think she would yeah. have been okay. I think she would but, at the end of the day. Yeah. I, I kind of agree with you on that. I think she'd be like, yeah, I don't care. Like, I, I don't think it would have been a big deal for her. I But, you know, it is what it I is. I think it would, be so yeah. vi- it would be so visually jarring, though. That That's the problem. I think it'd be just one of those things that it would take you out of the movie because you'd just constantly be reminded of it. And maybe after you saw it enough or you got used to it or there was something else that... Over time, that, it would wear off. Yeah, but. maybe so. But I think for a while, that would be really difficult to just remain immersed in the story. And I'd hate for it to take away from all the other, you know, presumably good things that they're going to be able to do in the movie and, sure. and have that be something that's called out. And I mean, maybe it would work fantastically, but I think at, on some level, quite frequently, it will continue to take you out. And maybe you don't, Maybe if you do recast, you you limit the number of scenes just to, you know, you don't have you don't have that edge all the time that's just constantly in your face reminding you of it. But yeah, I don't. At, at that point, is there another way? But uh, yeah, that's a tough question. Yeah, it, yeah. It's a hard one. I agree with Lyndon that yeah, this has been used interchangeably, and some folks are just going to say, well, since Carrie's not here, and we're not going to redo all these things digitally or whatever. Carrie then Leia's automatically not involved. I don't. I don't think that's the, the the case in the reality of things, but um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Have to see what they come up with. Yeah. I mean, I think they'll do the right thing in honoring her in the character. I hope they do. I think they will. I don't think they'll mess this up, but we, we shall see. I, I think I'm more open to it as time goes on. I'm more open to the fact that maybe in honoring the character and Carrie, if we could pull it off somehow, I'm open to it, but it's a hard thing to do again. Cause everyone's, Good Kerry and Mark and Harrison, the big three, those are almost impossible to replicate or even, you know what I mean? Like the, the, like the holy three, you don't mess with them and maybe finding, but then again, it goes back to Alec Guinness and Ewan McGregor. Ewan did added to the character and enriched that character, brought more to that character's character, obviously uh, that's, that's a tongue twister. And I think it was a done, it was done very well. And they, I, I don't have a problem reconciling like both of them. It's fine. It doesn't 
it flows I've fine for me. Reconciling his changing beard every other scene. Yeah, well, clones, yeah, but, well, hey, these things but that's happen. That's the difference between going back in time for something than from trying to replace as is. It's like when you watch a TV show and, and they replace a character and it's like, and they want to call it the same name. And they're like, uh, it's just a little off. It might be great, but it's just a little off. Yeah, I think, well, see, I think it's easier if you have a an older character and then we go back in time when we play the younger character. It, right. it seems fine for us, but it, vice, you know what I mean? Or, or a young character and then an older person playing that character. But if you have an older person playing the character for a few roles and then all of a sudden someone who's the same age or whatever and, and looks kind of similar to that character plays, it's like, nah, it's off. Like, it doesn't seem like it, I don't know, maybe that's just my thinking. I, I could be completely wrong. But uh, final thoughts, Albert, and I just want to, well, yeah, give me your final thoughts and I'll wrap it up and. And I'll say a few things for the uh, the two emails that we didn't get to. So um, chime in, sir. No, great questions all around. Honestly, um, these are my favorite shows because they, you know we get so caught up in you know what's going on in our own agendas that when we get thrown the questions, they're they're very they're they're really truly the thought provoking stuff these days that I think that we're I like getting into. So um, and I think we had some really good questions. I think we ended on a really great question. So thank you guys for everyone that that contributed them. Um, and then if I could just, I'm sorry, I'm going to do it, but uh, I know we have a lot of listeners from uh, England um, and a lot of them are Liverpool fans and we are playing uh, a big match this weekend. So go Reds. Thank you. Really? I had to do it. <laughs> really? That, that was a random. Deal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Jonesy. Yeah. My first uh, listener feedback Q&A type show and it was a lot of fun and it it was shocking. So the, the emails that we got were so detailed and, and, and very well thought out. And we had to really work hard to condense some of them to, to something that, that we could manage, but they were really well thought out and we really appreciate it. And Patreon members in particular, you know, for helping us keep, keep things rolling. And um, just the interaction we have, you know, for the folks that aren't on discord, I hope they come and join us because we do have a good time. There are some great conversations and some great folks that are out there and um, I hope they take a few minutes to come out and visit with us. You know, it's funny because when we first, Started doing the feedback shows. I never really liked them. Yeah, I, you I don't told know me you didn't like them. When I, I we, didn't when like I them. Started. Yeah, but they've grown on me. Like the questions have obviously gotten better over time and stuff. So it, it, it's it's an amazing thing to see it grow from where it was, where I just was like, yeah, I hated it. And now I, I like it because they do ask these questions that I'm maybe not even thinking or mm -hmm. they throw a curveball. And I like that. Uh, keeps me on my toes and stuff. So I, I enjoy that. So say Jack, we, sorry, we didn't get to your email and Chris from Tennessee. I apologize. We didn't get to your email, but Sydney, jo is, oh, what, oh, Sydney as well. Yes. We, she gave a detailed email. We didn't get the ch chance to do that, but I, I promise you there will be more feedback shows. Obviously Albert loves to do them and, and, and Jonesy does as well. So there will be those going forward and you guys will probably move right to the, to the top of the show there. And uh, we'll get to your questions and stuff. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Patreon members, of course. And, and of course, everyone that gave, uh, took the time to give us some questions. Uh, and especially the ones that we didn't get to tonight. But we will get to. I always say that. But we will at some point. So thank you, everybody. And uh, we will see you guys next week. You're still listening? Wow, that's amazing. Well, I'm here to give you the disclaimer. Normally we do a big, long, drawn-out disclaimer thing saying what's what and who's what and all that other stuff, but I think you guys kind of know that Lucasfilm and Disney have uh, no affiliation with us at all, uh, and we have none with them. Uh, we talk about Star Wars, which is their property and all that other good, fun stuff, uh, but I think you can tell which is our stuff and which is their stuff. If you can't, well, then send a lawyer to send an email to me, and I'll be glad to chat with them. Other than that, you know what's what, so that's your disclaimer. 